Hello, my name is Axel Kurtzik. I am Wade Collister. And today we're going to be building a 4-bit processor. Woohoo! Yay! Um, and we just made this presentation so that you can understand how it works, uh, what a processor is, and specifically how our 4-bit processor will function. Yep, yep. Okay, so maybe the first question that uh, you may have is what is a processor? Um, and a processor uh, is in every computer in our, in our modern world. Um, and it performs the basic operations and functions that are inside of a computer. So a processor will number and does math to it or logic to it, and that from that output, you can software is, is implemented, and therefore you can do cool things. Um, and with one thing that you might have heard with processors is uh, something called bits, something like a 4-bit or a 64-bit, and that's just how big of a number can go into um, the processor, meaning how big of a number it can, uh, that it can calculate. I mean, this is, this is good because if a, a bigger number can lead to more operations from software implementation, which means you can do cooler things. How does a processor work? A processor is very simple. It just goes and takes different zero basic commands, which are zero or one. Now, since it's a four-bit processor, it will be handling four different bits of information, or four true and false statements at one time. And it will be doing things like addition. We have our setup to do a subtraction and then also AND, OR, or ZOR. And the last three are logic operations, AND just compares to make sure that they're both true, OR just sees if one of them is true, if either OR are true, and ZOR checks to make sure only one of them is true at a time. And these are all going to be used for different things. Here we have a schematic of what our processor is, or what, what, what is inside a processor. And a processor is made up of different components, and each component has inputs and outputs. The first component inside of our processor um, is called a binary counter. And what this does is that it counts um, from zero to the highest number that's possible with that, with that bit intake. For ours, it's a four-bit counter, so it counts from zero to 127. Um, and this is based off of a clock that after every clock edge, rising edge, it will shift up one and it will count in sequence until it hits its highest number. Um, and from the, from the binary counter, it will output all these numbers. And those numbers will go into what's called a PROM, or a programmable read-only memory. Um, and what the PROM will do is it will take these numbers and it will assign it a specific function or operation. And so it outputs an 8-bit number, which will perform a specific function inside of the processor. And the top half of that number will, will, will determine kind of what operation is being done, and the bottom half of the number is the variable, like what is that number as it passes through the processor. The top half, like he was previously saying, goes to what's called our ROM. The ROM goes and translates those four bits of information and outputs eight different bits of information. Each bit of the eight output bits tells it each individual part of the processor what to do. So, for example, bits five, six, and seven all correspond to what the ALU does. 7 decides which algebraic operation we're doing, and 5 and 6 decide if we're even doing an al algebraic operation or if we're doing a logic operation. And so each of these bits does something specific and tells each individual piece what to do. The next component in our processor is called the multiplexer, or for short, I'm going to call it the MUX. And what the MUX will do is really simple. All it will do is it will choose between a 4-bit number from the PROM or a 4-bit number from the ALU, and the ALU we'll talk about later but that's short for arithmetic logic unit. Um, and it will output uh, one of those numbers. OK, this is the uh, <laughs> two-word four-bit register. It has two indiv individual registers, or also called words in this case. And depending on what we're needing to do, we need to either write into one or the other. We cannot write into both at the same time, though. And then with this information, we'll go and take this and either move it to the display or we could move it to the ALU. Okay, and now we're at the ALU. The ALU, as we were saying earlier, has, does this basic commands, add, subtract, and, or, and zor. So for the add, it basically just goes and sees if it needs to push another one bit over. Subtract, it just sees it, if it needs to pull it back, and compares to make sure they're both true, and these are all the basic different things. The final component of our processor is called the LCD display. Um, and this display will take a one 8-bit number that it receives from the both registers, and it will output that number. Um, and it will change it in a way that changes it into a shape. 
or in our case, a number or a letter on an LCD uh, screen. And this is connected to the actual board. And this logic will be received from the PROM. So we built um, a 4-bit processor. Um, and this is just some of it. Maybe Wade can tell us about some of the programming that, that went into it. Mm -hmm. So on the right side of the screen, we have the truth table, which tells us what each pin corresponds to and what it does. On the top, we have what the PROM programming is. So when we're programming the PROM, that is what we're actually putting into the PROM to tell it what to do. Okay, so let's move on to showing how it works. Okay, so here's our demonstration of our working 4-bit processor. Um, and it displays hello BG and ASCII values. It does simple addition, it does simple multiplication, and it does two types of subtraction. Okay, the two types of subtraction which distinctively actually have the exact same numbers popping up. We'll pause it right here so we can see them. 4 minus 3 equals 1. The first time we're doing it, we're using the hardware implementation. The other one is a software version of it which goes and takes 3 and turns it into a negative 3. Instead of just having the negative symbol, it makes it a negative 3 and then subtracts that from 4. Okay, so there's our working 4-bit processor. I approve of this message. <laughs>Good morning, friends. This is your personal wake-up call from Ron Burgundy. Hey, lazy, wake up!